Elsewhere in the Middle East, uh, far from the Israeli conflict, uh, something else has been brewing recently. Thousands of ethnic Armenians have now fled their homes in the region of Nagorno-Karabakh. The ethnic Armenian enclave is legally part of Azerbaijan, whose armed forces launched a lightning assault to take control of it last month. Baroness Claire Cox from the House of Lords has visited Armenia scores of times and relates her fears for its Armenian population. Well, I've had the painful privilege of visiting Nagorno-Karabakh many, many times. And recently, the situation has become very, very serious. It's a little bit of ancient Armenia that Stalin located in Azerbaijan, so it's formerly part of Azerbaijan. And last December, Azerbaijan blockaded the only road from Armenia into Nagorno-Karabakh, which is used for bringing in medicines and food and so on. So the situation was becoming very serious. The Armenians who live in Nagorno-Karabakh, they were getting malnutrition. One person actually died from starvation, maybe more than one. And then the situation got much worse about three weeks later, when Azerbaijan began military offensives, and it started shelling parts of Nagorno-Karabakh. People were killed. We don't know exactly how many, but quite a few were killed, many more injured. And the towns and villages inside Karabakh, they were bombed, and it was obviously horrific. And then the Armenians began leaving Nagorno-Karabakh about three weeks ago, a huge exodus, because they felt they couldn't stay. They were under attack, uh, there was food shortages, and they were being constantly persecuted. And so they began leaving, and since then there's been a massive exodus of the Armenians who live in that little land. It's a historic land. It's got some of the oldest churches in the world, because Armenia was the first nation to become Christian in the 4th century. So it is culturally and historically Armenian, but the Armenians are forced to leave, and they've been leaving, I'm afraid, in huge numbers. I think probably at least 100,000. We don't know the exact figures. We don't know the exact figures left, but the vast majority are leaving or have left. And that is very, very tragic. The problems that still remain are the fact that it's very hard for those in there to get food, uh, to get medical treatment. Uh, they're wounded. And uh, it's really, it's a kind of, it's being called ethnic cleansing by observers. And finally, a serious thing is that Azerbaijan is taking prisoners of the Armenian people who live in Nagorno-Karabakh, some of their leaders, I know them, very respected, honorable, decent people have been captured and are now in prison in Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. And they've been landed with horrific condemnations of things that will bring very nasty prison sentences. They're not true but they're imprisoned and they are now facing trial with very serious charges. So it's a very, very sad situation. It's actually quite a miniature hell. Massive exodus, uh, food shortages because of the blockades and people being taken into prison and being given very, very serious prison sentences. One of the great problems is that the international community has so far just stood by and let it all happen. They've given verbal condemnation and criticism but the United Kingdom has done nothing by way of action to call Azerbaijan to account. I think what is needed at this stage are sanctions, but they have not yet been applied. So Azerbaijan is continuing with impunity.